Chairman Nieves? Here. Vice Chairman Shaw? Here. Senators Lyba? Romine? Sylvie? Holzman? Here. Nasheed? Here. All right, we have a quorum, so we will proceed. All right, we have one bill to hear and then possibly a number of bills to exec on today. Um, let's see, I think you guys have already filled out a little magic form. Have both of you guys filled out the magic form? I see one nod. Okay. Anybody else is video recording? You're welcome to video record. You just need to fill out a little form. To do so, all right, very good. And you are welcome to audio record without filling out any kind of a form. The first bill that we're going to hear today is uh, Senate Bill 933. This is a bill that we um, had heard last year as well, so uh, it's it's rerun Tuesday. I'm going to quickly present this bill, and I think there's a number of people that want to speak on it, and so I'm going to hand it over to my very capable vice chairman. Ask you to take it from here. Please proceed, Senator. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, for the record, Senator Brian Yavis from the 26th Senatorial District, here to uh, quickly present to you a bill that um, I think most of us are familiar with. We had heard a bill just like this last year. Uh, this bill pertains to allowing the state auditor to have the power to audit uh, museums in the state and also goes into um, how claims can be made against a museum, what types of claims can be made against museums as well as uh, what kind of records museums need to keep, uh, museum districts and their officers, and how um, museums are to keep record of the things that they have that are on loan or have been given to them um, by individuals or entities. Um, and it also removes a section from law, you would notice on page three, um, that says a museum is not liable at any time in the absence of a court order for returning property to the original lender, even if a claimant other than the lender has filed a notice of intent to preserve an interest in said property. Da, 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 da. Uh, it takes that section, uh, removes that section. So this is pretty much identical <coughs> to a bill that we heard in this committee uh, last year. You might remember there was um, some degree of controversy on this, and so I'll be happy to try to answer any questions, but the story is probably best told by those who are in favor as well as those who oppose. Questions at this point? Please call your first witness. Um, I, I don't know that I necessarily have any. I know there's one person here that wants to speak on it, Mr. Heron, and there may be others, but I don't know. Okay. okay. Welcome, Mr. Heron. Hello, my name is Kevin Harris. I talked to you last year, pretty, pretty familiar with, with you guys, or with the committee, sorry. Um, I'm here to talk about this bill over the four years that I brought this legislation, and I've learned a lot about it. Um, this bill will actually allow the state auditor to do an audit of the museum district. Right now, we do not have that authority whatsoever in our state. Museum district acts like a, uh, their own sovereign nation is within our own state, and that, that's their exact words to me. And talking to the uh, president of the Science Center over the last uh, couple of months, he told me that all the museums are run this way, which, you know, to me, shows that we need some sort of protection as a taxpayer, as a loaner, as, as, as a person that deals with the museum. We need some sort of protection. You know, if we make a loan to them, they're not accountable. If they do not want to talk to you, they just tell you, we don't want to We don't want to talk to you, and that's it. You cannot get any answers out of them. When we ask them for documentation, they will not produce any documentation. And this documentation should be available to the public. We're asking that a register be made of the museum district, of all their items, so that people know exactly what is in the museum. 
That's something that the American Association of Museums suggests that it has to be done to their new tax. When I brought this legislation, I was told by the American Association of Museums to take this to my legislators and bring some sort of legislation. And, you know, basically that's what I started four years ago. Okay. Is, does anyone have any questions for this witness? Seeing none, thank you. Be sure to fill out a witness form. Does anyone else wish to speak in favor of Senate Bill 933? Are you, sir, do you want to speak in favor or do you want to speak on an informational basis after you? Okay. Anyone else wishing to speak in favor of Senate Bill 933? Anyone wishing to speak in opposition to Senate Bill 933? Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Uh, David Jackson, Minister of Lobbyists with the St. Louis Science Center, and um, we've been working with the Senator as well as Mr. Harris on this issue for quite some time, as you may recall last year, and first and foremost, I'd like to apologize on behalf of uh, Bert Pescovani, our CEO at the St. Louis Science Center, who could not be here today. They are, and we met with several of the Senators on the committee uh, and was in town meeting with the Senator's office last week, uh, or two weeks ago prior to spring break, but they are currently in their audit review committee uh, today. And so, uh, you know, this is an issue with Ms. Harris that we are, are trying to solve and have had for quite some time has been to the courts and through the judicial system and we prefer to keep that issue specifically uh, in the court system but in specific opposition to this bill uh, while we're committed to working with the senator on it we are worried that some of the provisions in here would be counter um, or would have some unintended consequences and, and could be costly in administering our annual duties and that we as a science center already currently performs an annual audit and as part of the uh, museum district in St. Louis we rotate on an annual basis with the other museums on an additional uh, an additional special audit and so uh, we're worried about some of the costs that could be incurred with this and I think that we have current records that and are getting better at as time goes on and keeping those records but we also have over a hundred thousand artifacts over you know several years to to register and, and keep track of. And so, as you may understand through a museum standpoint from, you know, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 years ago, as you're getting, you know, thousands and thousands of different artifacts, sometimes it takes time to, to try to prove those over time. But in regards to this specific case, uh, we are committed to continue working and handle this through the judicial route, but um, open to talking about this specific bill, but opposed this currently written due to the, some of the unintended consequences. So the unintended consequences that you would have to rapidly do a, a listing of all of your assets, all of the artifacts, and that that would be costly. Sure, if you had, an, it, you had public access to every record that, ever, that came in, in in terms of any unexpected demands in that sense, it, it could require additional personnel. Um, and on that side, though, we you know, do keep record of all our artifacts, and you know this is an isolated scenario that um, we haven't run into in the past. And so, so is it that uh, is it that you think that you don't have an adequate accounting of all of the artifacts as would be required under the bill right now? No, I, I think that we currently comply in, in keeping record of all of our documents, but the. Um, concern would be in terms of the the public demand and um, in access to that. Okay, so, so your your conflict with the bill specifically, the unintended consequence that you're talking about is that you think that when somebody would make a request, kind of like a freedom of information request about what you've got, that you'd have you'd have uh, too high of expenses to deal with. Correct, correct. And, then, and, and so, so, in addition to that, in terms of the consequences, in terms of the audit procedure, we think this could pre create a third layer of you mean unnecessary you audit. You don't procedure. want to have the, the state auditor have the ability to audit? We already currently have an annual audit performed, um, and we have an audit due to the state by the end of this month. And so, that's where you know our board is currently discussing today in St. Louis. And in addition to that, as part of the St. Louis Museum District, we have 
a special audit that, that rotates within the other museums. Is there any state law that required you to have that audit? I can check and answer that question. Um, I'm not sure off the top of my head on that, but I can check and, and verify the well, requirement in that. Well, the, the bill doesn't require the state auditor to audit you. Is that correct? It only says that if the people in the museum district ask for a state audit, that they can do it, right? Correct. correct. Well, if you're doing your own audit and you have that made available, wouldn't that pretty well convince people not to do it? Sure, I, I think it could, and we're happy to, to look at how that language is written. I mean, what the big thing. A, what about a, a compromise that would say that if you do your own audit, then you would be subject <clears throat> to the state auditor audit? I, I think we would be in favor of that provision. Is that really the only thing blocking your support of this bill? I, I think there there are a few other things within that, but that, that is the major piece of it that, that could be possible. I think we ought to be able to come up with a compromise myself. Yeah, I, I think that's definitely um, attainable. Senator? I, I, think, I think what you're suggesting, if I'm understanding it correctly, would, would simply put us exactly where we are right now. Right now, the, they can do their own internal auditing, just like any other entity can choose to do an audit of their own, but the state auditor does not have authority to do an audit. So, so if they don't do an audit, we should let the state auditors have the ability to do an audit. Is that what you're saying? I mean, that would be one way to look at it, but, but what the bill suggests is that because there are, you know, taxpayer dollars being used in these facilities, State auditor should have the ability to do the audit. Okay. Thank you. Any questions, Senator Holzman? Uh, real briefly, I have two questions. Um, the first one is: Is do you ha know how much this audit is going to cost you? I mean, can you put a, a price tag on the audit you're going to do versus the audit, the cost for an audit that the state auditor would do? I, I don't have that with me. I can I can try to find that answer, but I, I will also say, and through that, in how this bill would be implemented, there's going to be a, a lot of a large difference between what may, uh, the, the cost incurred by the Science Center and then a lot of other smaller museums um, that are much smaller than our organization throughout the state. When was the last time, you said an audit's due at the end of this month, when was the last time that you had an audit? Last year. So what would, what's, what is the difference between the information that you're providing in your audit that wouldn't be available in the state auditor that would solve this problem? So. If your audit's due at the end of this month, and you did one last year, and this bill's been here for, I, I, my understanding is, quite some time, what is it in your audit that's not solving the problem for the reason why the bill keeps getting pushed? I think we wonder that same question at, at times, and that we feel that um, in regards to the specific instance that prompted this bill, um, our, our records show that the items were returned, our audits reflected that they are no longer in our inventories, after the date that our records show they are returned, um, and the other party in this disagrees with with that um, that information, and it continues to, to linger, I, and that's what we've gone to court over, and the courts have decided. Do you have any qualms with the disclosure of the value of the items to the public? So, if you do an audit, we know what your collection is. And there's, you know, oh, what, does the audit show the value of the collection? Sure, I think a lot of that is going to vary, uh, and, but um, I can't speak to that specific question. If I may refer to the Science Center and get back to you with that specific answer, but I, um, but I think a lot of those are going to vary, and you have a lot of variance over hundreds of years of different artifacts that have been donated, and it's hard to... It, it does. It. I, will, I will say this. It does concern me a little bit if it's true that a representative of the Science Center has told member of the public that they feel they're sovereign from information gathering when a lot of museums depend on public funding for their sure. existence, that would be a problem with me. So sure, no, uh, understandable. And, and like I said, this is the first instance that's ever happened with this. And we have, um, to be clear, spent a, a lot of time, a lot of personnel, um, and a lot of money on this situation to try to resolve this case. We've opened up the collections. Uh, we've, we've given the documentation. Um, we've given multiple tours. Uh, to the other party in this specific instance and so we, we have spent a lot of taxpayer money trying to solve this both um, you know individually and through the judicial system to, to try to make sure uh, and, and 
that Mr. Harris has his artifacts. I mean, that we don't, we have no reason to want to keep anybody's, um, anybody's in materials that aren't theirs, but we also have a duty to make sure that we don't give away any materials or artifacts that, um, that somebody may not have clear documentation as theirs. Well, last question, what percentage of your artifacts do you think are categorized or cataloged? I know we have, I need to look through our, our documentations on that, and, and, but I have... Um, Ballpark, 75%, 80%, 90%. I, I would like to say a, a, at least 80, 90%, but again, that um, I'm give, not the expert on this. Is, can you give me that? Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Thank you. My apologies for, for being late, uh, Mr. Harris. I, we have a chance to visit quite some time uh, on this issue in the past as well. Uh, in the, the issue of the lost artifacts, was the audit that you guys performed used in the legal proceedings, was it a valid, uh, I guess, material evidence in this process? In terms of the court proceeding, I apologize. I, I don't have all of those facts. I, I believe it was. I know that uh, in terms of the um, requests that were made in, in all of the, what, what our records show in the items returned, the audits clearly showed every year that those items were no longer in our inventories. And just uh, for my clarification, is this a peer audit or is this a self-audit? A self-audit as I understand it, but I, again, I can clarify on that. And I guess the value of the audit or the credibility of the audit is the most important thing that we're dealing with right now. But sure, and that's where we also have the third-party audit um, that, that happens on a rotational, or, I'm sorry, we have the annual third-party audit, and then we also have the special audit that's done in a rotational basis within the museum district. And I think there are also some other experts here with some other museums that uh, be able to speak with more clarity to that. Who, who does the third-party audit? The, the St. Louis Museum District does a special audit that rotates on a, on a rotational basis and then our, um, in terms of the third party audit within the board, I'm not sure the exact but, uh, auditor within that process. The self audit and the third party audit, were both of those part of the proceedings that are you aware I believe so again, but I, I would defer to um, to our board directors and CEO who can get all the audit information to you. To inquire, Senator Nasheed. Yes. Oh, thank you. So you said something prompt this piece of legislation. Uh, what's what's going on? I mean, how did this legislation come about? Uh, correct. So I, I I think this legislation was originally centered around a situation where, um, as Mr. Harris testified, there are family artifacts that he has um, that that his family donated and loaned to the St. Louis Science Center that they would, um, you know, that they want to have in their possession and, and our records show that they've already been returned. They believe they have not been returned and that issue has been disputed and, you know, we feel that this bill um, would have unintended consequences on. So, so basically, we're here discussing uh, passing legislation because of one individual grievances that they have with uh, Art Museum? Uh, in terms of the St. Louis Science Center, I, I don't know. Oh, with, with the Science Center? I, I, I have not heard any any other individuals or organizations who... Uh, well, this is one person grievances that we're dealing with by way of legislation. As From what we have seen, this is specifically addressing one scenario. Wow. Unbelievable. Now, was this handled in court? It was. And the courts ruled how? Upheld the appellate court's ruling at the Supreme Court level um, that in this issue uh, has been and that's where resolved. And that's where it should have been handled. And, and, we're, and our attorneys continue to talk to their attorneys, and, and we are committed to continuing that process. And, and I want to be clear as well that um, because we, we do have taxpayer funding involved in the St. Louis Science Center, we want to be clear in our records, and we want to keep accurate records, and we think that we are already doing that in several different aspects. I still don't think that we should be here legislating based on one person's grievances with uh, the Science Center. Well, I think the, the issue... Center, 
I think a lot of our legislation comes up from an episode that, that happens. And I think the exposure here uh, is, is concerned whether or not there's an adequate auditing process for the Science Center or any other entity like that. Uh, I would, I'm very much going to be interested in seeing the auditing process and how it cross-references with the third party. Coming from a banking environment, you know, auditing is very important. We self-audit and then we turn around and have uh, the outside entity audit uh, just to make sure the numbers line up. And so uh, when you're using public funds, we need to make sure everything's accounted for in the most proper, appropriate way. And so I, that's what this bill is trying to do. And, and it's, it's not about one individual per se, in my mind. It's about an issue of the overall structure of how we operate. And Senator, to that point, I think you know we are committed to continuing to, to do that and make sure that, and we're happy to sit down with and review all of our audit history and how that's processed, and, and I'm happy to bring more clarification from our experts in that area, but I, I think we are committed to make sure that we're handling public funds appropriately and make sure that our records are clear and documentation is accurate. Thank you. Okay, further questions? Seeing none, thank you for thank you, your testimony. Please fill out a witness form. Anyone else in opposition to Senate Bill 933? <laughs> Seeing none, we have someone for informational purposes. Wait, wait, wait. wait, wait. I want oh, wait, we have an opposition. Sorry, I was a good wheel over there. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, on behalf of Missouri Humanities Council and Missouri Citizens and Citizens for the Arts, we have some concerns with the way the bill is drafted. Um, as we, I've talked to Senator Nava's office, uh, we think we are all about full disclosure and providing all information, but we also represent a lot of the small historical um, societies that are, like the Sheraton County Historical Society that is, takes county funds, so, it, and I don't know if your bill would only address, there are certain sections that do only address the Zoo Museum District, but then there's other sections that only say any museum. So that would be our concern, that some of those smaller museums would not have, that are all run by volunteers, would not have the sta staff and the capability to do a lot of this um, classification or be able to keep track of what's in there. Okay, questions for this witness? Seeing none, thank you. Should we fill out a witness form? Anyone else to testify in opposition to Senate Bill 933? Please come forward.
feel that the law is already covered. <coughs> that you can sue a, a museum if something is not found. And, um, it's funny to think more. Go back many years to your collections um, going back to 1885. Um, so it can be very difficult. But some of these museums, they change hands, like the small historical museums. Um, the head president leaves, someone, it just sits there, and no one covers it, and then someone comes in new, and they're trying to figure out the people just to keep the doors open. Other questions of this witness? Seeing none, thank you very much. Please be sure to fill out a witness form. Anyone else to testify in opposition to Senate Bill 933? Please come forward. Concerns about specific aspects of, of the bill, which I believe are unintended consequences. First, the bill uses the term audit when I think in museum policy at least we'd be talking about inventory of objects. This is a concern because in most museums, collections are not capitalized or treated as financial uh, objects, and in fact, there are ethical rules precluding their use as financial assets. So that there may be some confusion in the terminology being used, and I am concerned that. The ability to do a detailed object by object inventory is not the same as the skills necessary for a normal audit. Recognizing a particular variety of object determines its value and not sure if that's a skill set that the state auditor would necessarily possess. That's simply a general concern. Second, the bill is written currently requires that all donor and lender records be made available for public inspection at any time during normal business hours. In some ways, this may introduce not only a, a risk, a security risk for museums themselves, but also for the lenders. If a Missourian has managed to amass a significant art collection and wishes to show it to the public for the money of the museum, it probably is not entirely fair to that person that they then have to disclose the value of the individual works, where they will be housed when they return from the museum, and even information like the phone number so someone can call to see if they're at home if they're not. I think that's probably, again, a unintended consequence that would be a significant concern. Finally, many museums have objects which were given to them with an expectation of anonymity. This bill would not allow that anonymity to be preserved. Sir, um, are you testifying on your own behalf or on behalf of the entity? On my own behalf. Okay, thank you. Any okay. questions of this witness? Thank you very much. Sure. Please be sure to fill out a witness form. Anyone else wishing to testify in opposition to the Senate Bill 933? Seeing none. Informational basis. Find me. Here we go. Mr. Chairman and committee members, I'm Harry Otto, Deputy State Auditor, speaking to the Auditor's Office for informational purposes. This is not legislation we necessarily <laughs> sought, but uh, with respect to uh, chapter 29, which is the statute that tells us what we can and cannot do. We were good with the language that's, uh, that's in the bill. And, you, you know, if it is successful, if, if someday we do an audit uh, of a museum, uh, we probably won't spend much time on the, on the dollars. Uh, like Senator Romain mentioned, a, a bank audit, uh, the documentation, the following the rules, the regs, best practices, um, that's probably where we would go and spend most of our time on a performance audit as opposed to a financial statement audit, especially since some, audit, some uh, museums already have a financial statement. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions of this witness? Senator Roman. Thank you. I appreciate the clarification because in my term of audit means the uh, performance audit, not a financial audit. So I appreciate that clarification. Okay. Any further questions of this witness? Seeing none, thank you. Anyone else wishing to testify on an informational basis regarding Senate Bill 933? Well, you've already testified, sir. Can I answer one of the questions, though? It's up to you, Mr. Chairman. Did you have a, a counterpoint that you wanted to make, sir? Yes. Okay, please come forward and, and just very briefly state, state what your concern is. When we were crafting this bill, the, the uh, part about small museums was brought up to us. So we reworded it so that it would say that any museum under section 
through 184, 880. That would eliminate all the small museums. It would eliminate the little museum here at the Capitol and basically all the small museums. What that says is it calls out the museum <coughs> districts. There's only three museum districts in the whole state of Missouri. It's Springfield, Kansas City, and St. Louis. Okay, why don't you discuss that with us afterwards and we'll, we'll look at that. Okay, any, anyone else on an informational basis? Seeing